So we move to the left hand side of the edit window, left hand top side of the edit window, and uh, you'll notice that, or you will have noticed in the last video, that um, I used these zoom tools um, in addition to this zoomer tool uh, in order to zoom in and out. Um, the horizontal zoom in will move you, take, take you closer, uh, the, and then the zoom out will zoom out. What you can also do is if you click and hold and then you move your, cur your mouse, um, then it will, um, it will effect a different zoom for you, a sort of more dynamic zoom. Uh, <clears throat> these two in the middle um, are for waveform within the regions themselves, or the region displays themselves, uh, allows you to see more or less detail. Um, that can, I can't say I find that particularly useful most of the time, but you might. Normally if I want to see more detail in the waveform I will simply click on here or here, which essentially brings up the same menu, and choose a larger size display or track display. I'll go back to medium for now. So that, that's fairly straightforward. This, this one here, MIDI zoom in, obviously is irrelevant right now because we don't have any MIDI channels in, but it does much the same things. If you have a MIDI, uh, a piano roll display as one of your tracks, then you can see more or less keys by, by uh, clicking up or down on this control. These uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 here are preset um, uh, zoom levels. Um, I can't say I've ever used them, but you may find them useful. I believe you can also store them, uh, but again, I'm afraid I haven't, I haven't used them, so uh, I won't try and show you those right now. Left-hand side, these are editing modes, if you like, and they dictate how you uh, <coughs> kind of in, are able to move the regions within the track. So I'm going to move this back to waveform display. And I'm going to zoom out so we can see a bit more. I don't know why my cursor keeps flicking backwards and forwards on the screen. Okay. So um, most of the time, I I would recommend that you stay in slip mode. Or most, I, it really depends on what you're doing. But um, slip mode is is perhaps the most uh, fluid of the various modes, and it enables you to click and drag on the uh, the region and move it to wherever you like. Um, so you can, uh, so there's no kind of um, quantization, if you like, of or uh, I'll talk about quantization another time. But um, <coughs> it doesn't snap to particular places on the screen if you use slip. It just uh, enables you to move things around very fluidly. Um, spot, if you uh, move it, move a, a region, then immediately, as soon as you click on it, it comes up with a dialog box which. Uh, invites you to specify where you would like it to be placed. So having, uh, I might want to move it to 240 instead of 239. I do that and you'll notice it shifted slightly. Um, so that's spot. So again, these, it really depends on what you're doing as to how, how useful these particular functions are going to be to you. Oops. Do that. So that slip and spot. Grid um, comes up with a grid and enables you to uh, move your region around according to the uh, the grid spacings on you know that uh, Pro, Pro Tools has given you. So if I zoom in a bit um, and I can move this now and you'll notice it jumps to grid spacings each time. You can change the length of those grid spacings by clicking on the grid uh, drop-down menu up here, where it's got these green things. I was going to show you this later, but I'll show you this now. So grid value pop up, click on that, and at the moment it's giving you bars and beats. So <coughs> I can move it a half note, and that, that will give me... You'll notice the grid spacings change, the display spacings change, so I can move those um, by a, a greater amount. Or if I want more precision, but want to, you know, keep it quantized, then I can have, say, a one sixteenth notes, and it gives me tighter gradations um, and more control. At the moment, you notice that this is set to bars and beats, which is why I'm getting these uh, notes up here or note durations up here. If I wanted to 
go by m minutes and seconds, so I didn't necessarily want to be uh, tied down to bars and beats. I click on that, and the whole thing changes, and then the click on here again, and you'll notice that this is now one second and milliseconds uh, gradations instead of bars and beats. Uh, but the same thing applies. As I move them, it kind of jumps from one to another, like that. Um, <clears throat> and then finally shuffle, um, and to do to show you this I'm going to need to uh, do a little bit, sort of jump ahead of myself a little bit and make some quick edits, so I'm just going to make, sort of cut it up a little bit, like that. Okay, with shuffle mode um, it shuffles the regions around. Uh, in relation to each other. So if I play this, uh, the beginning of this prelude now, you will hear how it sounds at the moment. Okay. Um, so if I use the shuffle mode and I move one of these, you will notice that it doesn't do anything. Although I'm clicking and dragging at the moment, nothing's happening until I move it sufficiently that uh, there's a little, uh, it sort of pops up, or there's a, a little red line that shows where it's going to jump to, which is basically the, uh, the break between the two previous regions. So I drop it and they swap round. So I haven't introduced any extra sort of dead space. I've just uh, swapped those around. Um, so it shuffled them essentially. So I can do the same with this one, for example, and you know I can move them around. So now, of course, everything's going to be out of order. I hope you noticed the clicks in that, uh, even if you weren't, uh, you know, obviously the speakers are the other side of the room. I hope you noticed the clicks in that. Those are things you do not want in your mix. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's just to point that out. But that's what the shuffle mode does. Um, and also, if you click on a region and delete it, then everything else shuffles up to fill its place.